Hey, Crystal Blessings, everybody. It's Hibiscus Moon with HibiscusMoonCrystalAcademy.com. Every year, the Tucson Gem and Mineral Show, which if you don't know about it, it's a big event that they put on in Tucson, Arizona that revolves all around minerals. And they've been doing it for years and years. I'm not quite sure exactly when it began, but I think it's been at least 40 years or so. And it's arguably the world's biggest gem and mineral show. There's another one in Munich that's probably comparable to this one. So anyway, every year they come up with a theme for the year, and this year, 2013, is fluorite. And when I was there, they had the most beautiful specimens of fluorite there from around the world. Um, I have another video that I'll link to here where I went there and I, I went, there's a lot of shows around town, but I went to the main show where they have a lot of the museum specimens and they had a ton of fluorite there because that was like the main showstopper and the main show place to show them all off. So people who have these extensive collections brought their fluorite from everywhere and they're the most exquisite specimens. And they come from all over the world, fluorite. Um, they come in pretty much every single color in the rainbow. I can't think of a color right now off the top of my head that fluorite doesn't come in. <laughs> so um, they have just about every color. The property of fluorescence was discovered by a scientist and when he realized that fluorite would actually glow in a different way under black light, and I have another video about that that explains why it does that, um, he decided to call that property fluorescence, named after the mineral fluorite. So the specimens I have here are actually green ones, and a lot of times they'll take a big vein of fluorite um, that didn't turn out into a really pretty crystal, and they'll cut and polish it into a point like this. They don't grow naturally like this, but this is a beautiful Caribbean green color, and it has rainbows within it, and it's just a beautiful color. This is a piece that I actually got from Naika, Mexico, um, but I got it at the Tucson Gem and Mineral Show. It's a museum quality piece. It shows the classic cubic system, and it's actually partnered up here with Galena, um, something that it often grows together with. And they're both cubic crystal system um, crystals. It's a calcium fluoride mineral, technically, and it's not very tough. It's only got a hardness of four, which is why usually you won't find it in the jewelry trade because it's not a very durable mineral to make jewelry from. Being from the cubic system is interesting because the cubic system can represent itself as a cube, but it could also represent itself as pretty much any of the platonic solids. And in its growth phase, it will actually go through different phases throughout the platonic solids. Not all of them, but you might have a piece of pyrite that will morph from a cube into an octahedron, back into a cube again. So it's really, <laughs> don't get me started on the language of the universe and sacred geometry and how it relates to crystals, because I can go down a rabbit hole with that. Fluorite is known for being really good for making decisions, for helping us with studying and concentrating on something that we're trying to work on. I'll often, often recommend it to people for that purpose. Or even just balancing the mental faculties. It's really good for that. This is a really pretty fluorite from Durham, England. Um, actually from the Roger Lee Mine, which is a famous mine there. And this one has a really deep green color morphing into blue and it's sitting on the rock matrix and this is just a really nice representation of the vibrant colors that fluorite can come in. So I'm really happy I got to finally do this video on fluorite for the 2013 um, mineral theme of the year and I hope you all enjoyed it too. Okay, namaste.